Good morning. Today is Tuesday, February 7th, 2023. With me today, I have watch influencer Kelly Bird, also known as On Her Own Time. Welcome, Kelly. How are you this morning? Hey, Avi. I'm good. How are you? I, I always say I can't yeah. complain, and it's true. I, I can't because nobody listens. Um, it doesn't <laughs> fix anything. I, I feel like I have no sympathy because you are surrounded by some of the prettiest things on the face of the earth. It's true. Yes. And, and then there's also the watches. <laughs> exactly. Well, that is, yeah, um, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wanted to bring you on here because you are a pretty significant, you know, person in the, the watch industry. Uh, again, you're, you might not be a manufacturer, you might not be uh, a big watch dealer, but as an influencer, you have a lot of say and, and you show off really cool watches. You show off the things that every man and, and a lot of women obviously love, which is watches, you know, whiskey, guns, cigars. Um, these are all things that we're all big fans of. Obviously, watches come first, but we love your account. We love what you're doing with thank it. You. And I wanted to hear your story. I wanted to hear who you are. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having Let's me. Let's start from the beginning. Um, who are you? Yeah, well, I my name is Kelly Bird. Um, I am a North Carolina native, and that's where I am right now. Um, I'm a Virgo. I like long walks on the beach towards a cocktail, uh, usually whiskey, but no, I'm your typical average person. I, um, I have a family, I have a job, I have some pretty awesome, uh, hobbies. Like we just mentioned, uh, watches being the primary one, collecting, mm -hmm. researching, taking pictures of them. I like to say that whiskey is a hobby, but really I just like to drink it and that's convenient. Um, I do like the cigars. I grew up hunting. I grew up shooting all of that. So that's just part of my life there as well. Um, and that really is about all I do. I work and I drink whiskey and I take pictures of watches. <laughs> that sounds like an amazing life. I mean, I, in another life, I would want to be you. I'm not upset by it at all. They say surround yourself with the things that you love, and I've done it. <laughs> well, good to hear. Tell me, how did you get started with the whole watch thing? I mean, so again, growing up where you did, um, obviously, you know, hunting, drinking, cigars, but why watches? I don't, uh, it's kind of, it seems like a little bit off the beaten path. You know, how did you get into yes. that? So that's a, that is one of the biggest questions that comes up just because of the, the various things I like. I did not grow up with watches. Um, my family, mm -hmm. that was not a priority. And in all honesty, I actually grew up um, closer to the poverty line than anything. Um, mm -hmm. And I met my husband in 2011. And when we started cohabitating, we were before we were husband and wife, um, I knew he had an interest in watches. He had a tag Heuer, I think it was like a professional 1800 that he wore all the time. And he was very proud of it. He bought me this little Victorinox for Christmas one year, and I didn't realize at the time that he was grooming me then. But um, probably around like 2018, he started getting more vocal about wanting to get back into um, learning about them, sourcing them. He really wanted to find um, a luxury watch that he could have besides the one that he wore. And I was an Apple watch girl through and through. I didn't understand this. I didn't understand the price point. He would show me these watches and I was appalled by the th hundreds of dollars that they were <laughs> priced at. And, um, so he, he was dedicated and he found actually the gateway drug for me was a, um, it was a tag Hoyer Carrera Twin Time, GMT, and he found it pre-owned and he calls me one day and he says, Kelly, I found this tag and I knew we love the brand. And he said, um, it, it's, it's so sad looking. It's so sad. And it's only $600. And I just gasped in horror. Like, why would you want to spend that much money? Um, oh, I look back to those innocent days, but he's, uh, I said, you know what, if this is what you need in life to be happy, fine, do it, bring it home, whatever you need. He's a very, uh, reasonable buyer. So I knew that if he said, this is what I want to do, he was confident that our finances could support it, all of that. So fine. Um, I, on the other hand, am like an eight year old with a hundred dollar bill and a, in a like, 
gas station, I have minimal impulse control. So I tend to rely on his decision making. So he brings home his watch and it looks sad. It was grubby. It needed a lot. So he did what I consider surgery on my dining room table, Mm -hmm. um, cleaned it up, turned it around. It looks amazing. And he wore it for a little while. And then one day he said, do you want to, do you want to wear this watch? And I, I looked at it. I said, okay, sure. I'll wear the watch. Didn't take it off for three months. He never got it back. Um, and that's what did it. I started looking at it. I started reading about him. I started paying attention to the details. And, you know, one of the things I appreciate is the people who can really rattle off details about movements and reference numbers. And I try to educate myself, but for me, it's mostly the aesthetic of them. It's the significance of what has gone into that piece on your wrist mm-hmm. that has a function, but it also has a very, very beautiful presence. Um, so that did it. I, that was what happened. I stole his tag and then he said, great, I really want an Omega Seamaster. That's my grail watch. Um, and I was in hook, line, and sinker, and it was all downhill from there. And you will never hear me complain about a six hundred dollars watch again. <laughs> well, hey, works on all 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 levels. We have a shared hobby now. Um, I'm much more into it than he is, but we have a lot of fun talking about it, arguing about him, um, just debating various features that we like over the other one i i have a much more eclectic taste than he does um he has he wears like three watches out of the box so it's it definitely makes things really cool in our relationship oh absolutely you know to have something in common like that to have a a shared Mm -hmm. hobby is amazing i mean you could obviously you, you, you can justify the purchase of any you know any watch and really just both of you get to use it exactly given how women today are wearing larger larger watches as is you know it works um it now, so do true. you actually have a passion for, like, are you trying to learn more about, like, that, the complications, the reference numbers, the vintage pieces, the history, or are you more into this is a really just a nice-looking watch and, you know, that's what I care for more? So my eye is always going to be grab, uh, grabbed by what I think is pretty, but I want to understand more about each one. So there are some brands that I just don't under I don't pay attention to because for some reason there's something about it that just doesn't speak to me. But if it does, then I want to understand more about the history of the company. I want to understand what their vision was. I want to understand what makes that watch work because you hear all of these different words and the the brands change, the name of the certain watch changes, but they all have pretty much very similar guts. Um, And I love understanding how something works and why it works like that. Do I think I will ever be able to take apart a watch and put it together? Absolutely not. I used to destroy my dad's calculators. So no, I don't think I'll ever be there, but I would like to understand more about movements and just to take that appreciation to a much deeper level. Like you can appreciate something because it's pretty, but you also want to appreciate what it's made of. Yeah, how it works. Now, let me ask you, mm-hmm. what's a brand we would never catch you wearing? Oh, gosh. Um, Ublo. I would, really? I think it's an overpriced G-Shock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing about, about it really. One? North Carolina, first of all, is like a dead zone for watches, by the way. Like we have your Rolex dealers. They have these really pretty empty mm-hmm. cases. Um, Omega. Mm-hmm. Oris, Tag, Breitling, all that stuff. But to see some of these really high-end pieces, you have to leave the state. Um, so the first time I got to see Ublo was in Vegas. And it just, I, it made me think of a G-Shock. And I just, I'm sure that there's a lot of heart and effort and quality that goes into it, but it does not speak to me at all. So they recently released, they, they already had one before, but this week they they just announced additional models of the Takashi Murakami one, which is like mm-hmm. the, it's like a Japanese designer. He does like the multicolored, usually like the rainbows. Like the, so the one they released was the Sapphire one with like a spinning, you know, Takashi like logo, which is, it's yeah. kind of like a flower. 
Um, nice looking huh. watches, but yeah, there's a lot of a lot of hate for Hublot. Um, I'm not sure if it's just because people don't dislike the brand or if they dislike the the price slash you know complications or quality or what you're getting for the buck. Um, yeah. What's what's a Grail watch for you? Oh. I love this subject. Um, so the my grill watch is, and again, I speak fluent Southern, so I'm sure somebody could pronounce this much nicer than I can. Um, the Jacques Edro Petite Hour Minute Relief Snake. Uh, I've been in love with that watch since 2018. This thing is perfect on so many levels. It's got a beautiful dial and it's got this intricate Cobra right around the dial itself. And it's a perfect size. I love a bigger watch. And when I first saw it, I said, you know, that it classifies as a lady's watch. And so I said, well, I can't really, I'm not comfortable in things under 38 millimeter. And I said, that's, it's going to be tiny. Well, it's 42, 41 or 42. And So I've just, I've obsessed over it. And then 2020, I turned 40 and my husband Mm -hmm. took me to Vegas for my birthday. And we were walking through, I think it was crystals. And I see Turbion. And of course, as soon as I see the word Turbion, I'm like, the watch is not knowing anything about Vegas. So Mm -hmm. apparently it's a very well-known thing. And we go in and I realize very quickly it's a Swatch store. And so they have all of the brands that Swatch owns. And we see Jacques Hedro on the mm-hmm. side of all of their different brands listed. And I, I grabbed Peter's arm. Like, I think I may have like scratched him, but I said, we have to go look for this watch. He said, they're, I don't think they're going to have it. It's such a very unique piece. I'm like, they're going to power a positive mm-hmm. thought. They had it in the window. And this wonderful wow. young man I walk in and he greets us. I said, I'm just going to stop you right there. I'm not buying a watch today, but you have my grail watch in your window. And you could tell he hears this quite a bit. And he said, let me go get it for you. And then that's when the anxiety set in because you hear people constantly say, especially with pieces that are very obscure, I never want to meet my grail because it's like meeting your hero and then being disappointed. So as soon as he goes to get it, I'm like, oh, no. What if I hate it? Um, I didn't hate it, which made it probably worse because it's an eighty-eight thousand dollar watch. Um, but wow. it was perfection on every single level. It's funny. Do you think like there are other people that take you know Jacques draws their like Grail watch? I mean, it seems like a kind of you know strange brand to. Uh, you know, to, to, to grill. We actually just hey, talked about their yeah. new um, release. Like they had a Rolling Stones homage watch, like where you can actually design which Rolling Stone cover you want on the dial. Um, and oh. they handmade like every little piece of it is really cool looking. That, see, that's, assuming, I love that. I assume you can get your grail watch for, you know, probably, you know, 20, 30 percent. Of the, actual, of the retail price. <laughs> the young man did say that. He said, yeah. well, I'll let you know we can do 20% off. And I just, I thanked him <laughs> very much. Yeah. Uh, we are not 20% off here. of an 88,000. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely not enough. Um, but if you ever, if you ever do really want it, I'm sure we could find it for you at a, at a price much more affordable. I know affordable. exactly where to go when I'm ready. So don't you worry. <laughs> Good to hear. Now, Tell me what, like, what is your goal with the Instagram? What are you aspiring to do there? You know, what do you want to do more of? So that's been a conversation that we've been having a lot lately because I did not expect any of what has happened with Instagram. It originally became a safe place to post pictures of these watches where my mom wouldn't Mm -hmm. see them and then judge me for what I spent my grown up money on. (laughs) So uh, it very quickly introduced me to even more of a community. My first introdu- introduction to watch communities was like Facebook. And so I quickly mm-hmm. realized that there's this entire population on Instagram and it is my preferred platform. Um, it's just a much nicer place. And yeah. except for the gray market Facebook group, which is a stellar place as well. So <laughs> I for that shout out. Absolutely. Um, so we, uh, so I started it originally intending it for it to be a shared space for me and my husband. He is, he can take or leave social media. So then I, I made it about me. Um, 
and it's kind of blown up. And so now we're having these conversations about what do we want to do with it to make it work for me. It's it there's time and attention and effort that goes into it. So I want to get something back and I would prefer that something back to be in monetary value. I've gotten to have, I've gotten to create relationships with brands, um, watch brands, strap brands, whiskey brands, cigar brands because of this. And it's been phenomenal. It's opened a lot of doors to participate in events and to meet people. Um, so I'm very thankful for that, but I am ready to continue that. And make a little something on the side. So we are still using on her own time as the primary platform. Um, but in the year of 2023, you are going to start seeing more about a little project called bird watch company. Uh, to answer the first question, no, I'm not making a watch that will right now that will not happen. If it does, it'll be a while down the road because that is a huge undertaking. But what I, love about our community is the same little catchphrases that we see over and over, um, almost like inside jokes for us that make sense, like watch fam, wrist check, things like that, that if I said that to somebody who's not into watches, they'd be like, what are you talking about? Um, yeah, my, so favorite one is, I, my favorite one is, is watch porn because people are like, yes, watch porn. I what, love that. You know, what I are you love talking that. about? <laughs> Yep. We, uh, that is sadly a broken hashtag on Instagram. They don't like it when you use that one. Um, but I was we actually going to ask you at... about, about this next endeavor. <laughs> okay. So uh, we go ahead, are, tell me uh, more about it. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to, uh, try to take advantage of, <laughs> um, the people who really want to incorporate these little things in every aspect of their life from mugs and koozies and t-shirts and hoodies. So in the sense, merch, but it's not specific to on her own time. It's, it's going to mm -hmm. be a little bit of anybody, regardless of where they are in their collection, can find something that speaks to them. I, I want to see it expand to um, whiskey uh, kind of accessories, etched glasses. I have some creative ideas there. Um, and then we also have some other kind of customized aspects to it. So it's we're starting it small with just a few different um, products, and then it's going to branch out as we um, get a little bit more confident with the process. So that is Birdwatch Company. It's going to be products. There may be a strap or two involved. We are looking at that option from more of a branded from my personality kind of thing. Um, my favorite color is red. I tend to gravitate towards red or black when it comes to certain straps. And so we are looking at the opportunity to create more of like an on her own time personality strap, uh, but not become a strap dealer. There is a huge market for that already. And I've got some great relationships with some of them. So I don't really feel like being a competitor with my friends. Yeah. I mean, you could definitely do it as a collaboration with them. I mean, I think mm -hmm, that exactly. your own brand, you know, being able to sell things that, you know, might target a consumer that current, you know, brands are not. So in your case, and again, I'm not, you know, not to um, pick one or the other, but I think that you would be really good targeting women. I mean, there, there is a community yeah. of, of women watch enthusiasts that nobody really caters to. Um, right. So I feel that there's a void there that you could fill. I think so. I absolutely think so. And I, um, I can't wait I to know see what I like some to wear. of those products. So thank you. Uh, well, you know, I pl fully plan on, uh, sharing certain gift boxes with my friends. And I do consider the Luxury Bazaar team my friends. And so if you get a random box at your door from me, it's totally safe. It's mm. it'll be exciting. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Um, we'll definitely support you any way that we can with these these products. Um, we're Thank actually you. in the process right now of, of working on, on our merch. And we're also, you know, I like what you're doing with it. You're not going you know, just specifically to the brand. It's not just going to say on her own time, you know, like exactly. it's more general for watch collector, watch collectors and enthusiasts, which is what I'm trying to do as well. Not trying to just sell products that say luxury bazaar on them. Who, you know, who's luxury bazaar? Nobody knows. But when it comes to watch, you know, stuff and like horology, yes. it's a lot more general. Exactly. Well, I will tell you that one of those gray market caps is on like the top of my Christmas wish list. Done. 
Wait till you see the new stuff. The new stuff is amazing. Okay. Okay. Kelly, thank you so much for being with me and taking time to talk to me about what you have been doing, what you're continuing to do, and the future plans for you and, and your brand. Um, I'm assuming everybody can find you on Instagram at, you know, on her own time. Is there anywhere else that you want to plug where people could find you? That is the primary um, location, but I do have a YouTube account that I am going to get back up and going this year um, with more content, more Kelly specific approach to watches, uh, which usually involves laughing. <laughs> so follow me on YouTube. Follow You can always find me on Instagram. I love to meet new friends, see what you've got. Tell me your new watches. Tell me what you want to achieve with your collection. I answer messages, so don't make it weird. Um, but otherwise, Avi, thank you so much for having me. I have thoroughly enjoyed this. Me too. Thank you. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and we'll talk soon. Sounds good.